Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to Macho Nacho Productions. It has been two years in the making, but it's finally here. The Analog Pocket. I've been eagerly anticipating its release ever since its announcement and was fortunate enough to get a pre-order in when they opened back in 2019. Now I have a white model here and I'm not going to bore you with all the technical specs since there's a lot of great videos that cover that in great detail right here on YouTube. Instead, I'm just going to go over what I think about the console, what I like, what I don't, and what I see as the future of the Pocket and Analog's venture into the handheld market. Now, when I put my pre-order in, I was able to get several of the Pocket accessories, which includes the dock, the clear plastic case, the Game Gear adapter, and the screen protector. I also bought the fast charger, not realizing that the dock already came with that, so I guess I have an extra one. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna go over each of the accessories and the pocket itself, telling you my experience with it thus far and some of the problems I ran into. I'll also go over what I think this device represents, where the company analog and its pocket handheld go from here. And lastly, I'll discuss who this console is for and whether or not I think it's worth picking up. So sit back, relax, and let's get right into it. So first, let's go over each of the accessories, starting with some of the more trivial ones and working our way up to the pocket handheld itself. So the first thing we have here is the screen protector. These are literally the first quote unquote mod that I do on electronics like my Nintendo Switch and iPhones since I absolutely want to avoid any potential scratches on the screen. Now, my biggest issue with the analog kit is that you only get one screen protector. So if you mess it up, you're SOL. No second chances here. I'd recommend skipping this accessory and opt instead for a cheaper alternative. There appears to be a few options readily available that work, which I'll leave links to in the video description. Luckily, I was able to apply mine without any issues. Next, I have what Analog calls the hard case. It's a clear plastic case for the pocket, and to be honest, I absolutely love it. It's perfect for placing on a shelf to neatly display the console. However, beyond that, it's basically useless. I would not use this as a travel case, and this is purely in my opinion for the purposes of displaying the pocket only. I will say, however, one of the things I really like about the case are the pegs that align with the pocket screw holes, which keep it from rattling around inside the case. It's details like this that make this case desirable, at least for me. And at $30, it's definitely on the expensive side. And I would say that if you are not planning on displaying the console, you can go ahead and skip this accessory altogether. On the other hand, if you have $30 burning a hole in your wallet, I'd say go for it. However, that money would be much better served finding an alternative that will actually function as a travel case. I am currently looking for an option, so if you have any recommendations, please let me know down below in the comments. Okay, this next accessory is where things start to get interesting. This is the Game Gear adapter. This allows you to play Game Gear as well as Sega Master Systems games, which I'll be doing by utilizing my EverDrive. So far, this is the only adapter that Analog has released. However, they have plans to release adapters for the Neo Geo Pocket Color, Atari Lynx, and TurboGrafx-16 sometime this year. And at $30, I think these are fantastic add-ons that really expand the capability and game library of the Pocket console. The adapter works great for Game Gear games, and I really haven't run into any issues at all. There were some strange scaling problems for Sega Master System games, but they have largely been fixed with the latest firmware update. Analog so far has released two firmware updates as of the making of this video, 1.0 and the latest being 1.0a. So far with the latest firmware, everything has been working great. So in short, this is a high quality, simple adapter that gives you Game Gear functionality for only 30 bucks. I think this is certainly worth picking up. Now let's get into the meat and potatoes of this review. Let's take a look at the dock. This was certainly the accessory I was most excited about. However, this is also the accessory I have experienced the most issues with. But first, let's go over the good. After updating the firmware from 0.9 to 1.0, most of the issues I initially experienced have been resolved and the dock functions as it should. When I first tried it out, I was having a lot of problems trying to get an image to appear on the television, and for whatever reason, it just didn't seem to register. However, immediately after updating the firmware, that problem was solved. Additionally, I really dig the minimalist design, and it overall has a very premium feel. Most of the dock is plastic, 
but this accent bar on top appears to be made of metal and gives the dock some heft. I was able to easily pair one of my PS4 controllers to the dock and found it to work extremely well, and video output through HDMI looks fantastic. However, that's where my issues began. Unfortunately, as of the making of this video, the dock only supports several Bluetooth controllers. I was really hoping I'd be able to use my collection of 8BitDo 2.4GHz controllers, but that functionality will be added later on in a firmware update. So while it is a bit of an inconvenience now, controller compatibility will improve as time goes on. Now another thing that I am not fond of is how the pocket connects to the dock. It requires a bit of force to firmly seat it onto the USB-C connector. And in order to remove it, you need to firmly hold the base and pull the pocket out, again using quite a bit of force. To better explain the issue, let's take a look at the Nintendo Switch. This is arguably the gold standard when it comes to console docks. As you can see, there is absolutely no force required to both insert and remove the switch from the dock. I think it would have been fantastic if Analog utilized this design in their docking system. Now all these issues are by and large minor grievances, some of which will be fixed with firmware updates. However, the biggest problem I've encountered with the dock has given me pause on actually using it moving forward. To explain the problem, whenever I remove the pocket from the dock, a very audible static discharge sound occurs. It's a very off-putting sound, almost like an electrical arc. Take a listen. Now this sound isn't made when plugging and unplugging a normal USB-C cable, so I don't know what's causing it. But according to Analog, this is normal and should go away with time, as can be seen in Analog's response to another individual experiencing the same issue. I used the dock several times, and it doesn't appear to be improving. This is a very disconcerting sound, and I almost don't want to use the dock because of it. I really hope this isn't a hardware issue, but it's definitely something I'm going to be keeping my eye on. Okay, so those are all the accessories that I got for the console, but now it's time for the main event, the pocket itself. I want to start off by saying that I absolutely love it. Its larger size feels great in the hands, and the screen is absolutely gorgeous. So on that note, let's go over everything I love about the handheld. Like I said, the pocket feels great in the hands. It's got a hefty weight, and the buttons feel fantastic. The D-pad and action buttons are membrane-based and are a pleasure to use. They have just the right amount of firmness, and they are very responsive. I have no complaints at all. The start, select, and analog function buttons have a more clicky, tactile feel, and it works just fine for me. Now moving on to the triggers, I have to say is a bit of a weak point. Much like the very similarly designed unhinged SP, the positioning and lack of actuation distance leave a lot to be desired. It's by no means bad, but I have to say that even the standard SP triggers have more travel distance than the pocket. Now I know a lot of folks didn't like the fact that the power and volume buttons were right next to each other, but I honestly don't have an issue with that at all. I haven't accidentally hit the sleep button, although I'm sure at some point I will, but again that shouldn't be that huge of a deal. And speaking of the volume buttons, I actually really like the mute functionality that you get by pressing both the volume up and down buttons at the same time. It's really convenient, and I've used it quite a bit. Now, design-wise, I think the pocket looks stunning. The minimalist lines, the monochromatic color scheme, and the matte finish really do give it a premium feel. The raised glass and subtle branding again lend to that premium aesthetic, and I absolutely love it. Now, moving on to the Analog OS, again, I think there is a lot to like here. First, there is the sleep functionality. I've been using it quite a bit and haven't run into any issues. I know there have been reports of people losing progress in-game or not being able to resume play, but thankfully with the latest firmware, it's been smooth sailing. Going along with the sleep functionality are save states. Again, I've used this functionality a handful of times on some games, and it works great. However, I have to caveat that this isn't a feature that is reliable when it comes to flashcards. On several instances, resuming a game from a save state on a flashcard cause the game to crash, rendering this feature useless. So if you are planning on using save states, I'd recommend on using it on official carts only. Now other than that, the features of the analog OS is fairly sparse. 
I do really like the minimalist interface, and I think again, Analog hit the nail on the head. I am really looking forward to seeing how the operating system evolves over time. So while the features are fairly sparse for now, I am hopeful that we will be getting periodic updates that both improve stability and add new capability. Another great thing I love about the Pocket is its compatibility with accessories such as the Game Boy Camera. That's the beauty of FPGA. This gives the most accurate representation of the original hardware while using all new components. Additionally, I absolutely love the console's flexibility. By itself, this is essentially a Game Boy Advance with inherent compatibility with GBA, Game Boy Color, and original Game Boy games. When you add the various adapters, it morphs into a different console such as the Sega Game Gear, and in the future, a Neo Geo Pocket Color, an Atari Lynx, and a Turbo Graphics Express. The three ladder systems are all becoming increasingly expensive to buy. Purchasing each of these now require a tiny fortune, but buying each of the adapters will only set you back about 30 bucks each, and in comparison, that's a bargain. And it's all contained in one tidy package. I absolutely love that. And the last pro I want to go over is the screen. It's just stunning. Game Boy and Game Boy Color games never look better. The various screen effects also look fantastic, providing convincing overlays thanks to the insane pixel density. When it comes to playing both Game Boy and Game Boy Color games, the sheer size and perfect integer scaling makes this my absolute favorite way to play these games. The closest comparison for an IPS mod are the Q5 kits, but honestly, they are dwarfed by the Pocket's enormous and pixel-dense screen. And when it comes to Game Boy Advance games, the screen size and quality is very comparable to many of the IPS modding options out there. As you can see, due to the Pocket scaling to the Game Boy Advance aspect ratio, you end up with a screen size that is comparable to my unhinged SP, and they both look fantastic. So really, where the screen shines in my opinion is for playing Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. I've just started playing Pokemon Crystal again, and I am really enjoying the experience. But of course, it's not all sunshine and lollipops. There are a few problems with the Pocket, so let's quickly go over those. The first con is no internal Bluetooth. Much like the Switch, I can't use Bluetooth headphones with the console. It thankfully has a 3.5mm headphone jack, but in 2022, with a modern device like this, I think the inclusion of Bluetooth is a no-brainer and a missed opportunity. Next, like I mentioned previously, the triggers are a bit of a letdown. It's honestly just a minor gripe, and I'm sure there are folks out there that don't have a problem with them, but I honestly can say I'm not a fan. Another con is the dock. I just can't get over the audible electrical discharge sound every time I remove the console. I can't explain what's causing that noise, and I really hope that Analog addresses it officially soon. To me, it seems like a hardware issue, and I'll definitely keep you all posted as I learn more about the problem, but in the meantime, I actually won't be using it. And lastly, the biggest con is the sheer scarcity and wait time associated with getting one of these. Unfortunately, some of this is out of Analog's hands with the ever-present chip shortage, but that doesn't completely absolve the company. Analog has a well-documented history of maintaining low inventory, and whether that is done on purpose or not is hard to determine. And when you add resellers to the mix, it's a problem I don't see getting resolved anytime soon, unfortunately. I'm hoping that in the future, they will increase their production numbers so that those who want their products can actually get them. Okay, so what does the future hold for the Pocket and Analog at large? Honestly, I think the future looks bright. The Pocket has been tremendously successful, which I am sure is not lost on Analog. I think they know there is a lot of opportunity to be had with the Pocket. For example, introducing more colors I think would give consumers more reason to purchase the console, and maybe even get another one that's in their favorite color. I think if they released a sort of Play It Loud series like Nintendo did with the original DMG, that would be absolutely amazing. That is of course after they get their supply chain in order, which who knows how long that'll be. Another possibility I see is a redesign to a horizontal form factor, much akin to the original Game Boy Advance. I think this would be another fantastic option that they could introduce to keep their pocket lineup fresh. And speaking of additional form factors, one thing folks were surprised about was the size of the console. I think a lot of people were expecting a slightly smaller design. So how cool would it be if they at some point released the pocket light? 
something that is a bit more pocketable than this version. I just see a lot of possibilities and directions that Analog can go in with this product. I really hope we see some variations in their design in the near future. And as their new operating system becomes more mature, I think we will start to see some interesting new features come to the pocket. Additionally, it is my understanding that future analog products will also implement the new OS, which to me means we may see some cross-platform functionality. As analog develops their ecosystem, the company could really disrupt the retro gaming landscape. And of course, we will inevitably get a jailbreak for the console, allowing us to play some games directly from the SD card, and hopefully maybe even load additional cores for other consoles such as the Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo. That would truly make this an amazing platform. So while I think there is a lot of exciting things to come from Analog with the Pocket, let's address the question of whether or not you should get one. And this honestly depends on your needs. If you want to play original carts with the ability to play Game Gear as well as other handhelds in the future, play these games on a television using a wireless controller, and have the most accurate representation of original hardware, this quite frankly is the only game in town. If all those features are important to you, this is the most compelling, or in reality the only product out there. Now I could make a whole video dedicated to alternatives to the pocket, so if that's something you're interested in, let me know down below. But in a nutshell, I wholeheartedly recommend the pocket. It is a fantastic piece of kit with so much to like about it. That's not to say that you can't get an equally enjoyable experience from a modded console or even handheld emulators. But the Pocket represents a beautifully integrated package with so many unique features that you just can't find anywhere else, such as sleep mode and save states on original game carts. But that isn't to say it's perfect. Like I mentioned previously, my biggest issue with the Pocket is the dock. I'm really crossing my fingers in hopes that Analog will rectify the issue. And with the excruciating long wait times and a premium price tag, there are, like I said, some very compelling alternatives if you are willing to not have some of the very nice features that the Pocket offers. However, despite its shortcomings, I can safely say that Analog really knocked it out of the park with the Pocket. I'm enjoying it immensely, and I can't wait to see what Analog does with this new line of FPGA handhelds. Anyway guys, that about does it for this video. There is so much to talk about with regard to the Analog Pocket, and I just scratched the surface. I'm sure I will be doing a follow-up video sometime in the future. If you have any questions about the Pocket in the meantime, let me know down below in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. And if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and hit that like button. It really helps me and the channel out. Anyway, I just want to wish you all a very happy new year and an amazing 2022. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then, see you all next Thursday.